What's up, YouTube? Mr. Lime SE here, and today we're going to be doing the hell portion of the Elemental Boazon uh, guided playthrough, let's play, you know, whatever we call it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. This should be good. Now, this is going to be difficult, right? This is a cold fire Boazon. We've, we've actually crushed through Normal and Nightmare, and this character is really strong through Normal and Nightmare. You can run normal pure fire all the way. You can run nightmare pure cold, honestly, all the way, and you'll crush through both of those. You can do a little bit of that mix and match like we did at the end there, um, and it's still pretty solid. But once you get to hell, the monsters get harder, your resistances get lower, all of this stuff, a lot more immunities come into play, and it's going to be a little more difficult. So we're going to have to have some patience. We do have our Valkyrie and stuff, um, so that will help out a little bit. But we can go ahead and dive in. Now, I am level 55, and I want to remind you guys that you don't have to enter hell at level 55, right? You can very easily come over here, do like players five or something, go out to here, and just kill these guys, right? This is totally a fine way to just get your experience up. It can take a tiny bit, of course, but nice and easy, and we're just gonna level up on Eldritch. At the same time, you can also go and level up on uh, doing like bail runs or whatever you really want, um, but this is, this is essentially where you're gonna be. Feel free to level up into the 60s if you would like. That's totally fine you'll be you'll be doing a-okay but let's talk a little bit about where we are now i'm going to push forward at level 55 here but again like i say if you want to be higher level totally good i'm currently running this edge bow um again this is all about the ias and the plus one to bow and crossbow skills that's really what i'm aiming for right here if i can get myself a co rune or something i will go for melody i want to get more bow and crossbow skills I also have this rock stopper on right now. This is massive for those resistances. You can see just how big of a shift that is for my resistances. Absolutely huge. This was a fantastic find for us. You probably have a lore helm or something, but maybe you found something else really nice there. I made this prismatic amulet just so I can get some more resistances all across. This is just one of each gem um, and then an amulet. I made a peace rune word for the plus two to skills. I found some two to bow and crossbow skills when I was shopping. Uh, just search for those a little bit. So that was nice for more of that. This is some mana and then four to all res, some life and cold res. This is some uh, quad res right here, really good light and fire res. And then again, some fast run walk lightning res. Really some nice stuff that we have found. Also, we do have this teleport staff and we do have this lower resistance wand so we have both of those pieces right there so that is my gear my mercenary has the lore helm that i was using because i traded him the rock fleece and then also an insight that i made um, for some damage and then of course for a little bit of that mana as well so we can go ahead and begin and head out here and now again you're gonna have to remember that you can't kill everything for instance this first boss that we come across is cold and fire immune so i actually can't kill him but thankfully i do have this mercenary and i do have the valkyrie as well and so the combination of those two is going to work for us there we do want to be a little bit careful as uh, monsters do a lot more damage now. And Jamali, we're going to have to also watch him a little bit more closely as uh, death is very quick for mercenaries. So we just take it nice and slow, and that's really the, you know, the main piece of it all. Spawn, hey, thank you very much. But you also don't have to fight every single mob. There goes the mercenary. I mean, we figured he would die quickly, honestly. You also don't have to fight every single monster, and that's an important thing to remember. 
um, is, you know, we are fighting what we want to fight. You can always be moving through, moving past these things if you would like. That totally works. But when I see nice boss groups, it entices me to, to fight them. Because I am still going to need some levels. And getting some levels with some plus skills is going to be uh, helpful for me here. I also do enjoy the chance to freeze that we have here. And again, you can just see how strong... Moo. Hi, YouTube, and greetings to my future self laughing face. Thank you, Daniel. You can see how strong the Valkyrie is. Again, this is a level 15 Valkyrie, thanks to Peace, and that is going to just be absolutely huge. Now, if I was just using the level like one Valkyrie, level three Valkyrie, whatever it is that I have, it'd be okay, but really not amazing. It would die very quickly, but where it currently is, it is in a fantastic spot to just uh, tank a lot of the game in the areas. Now, I'm going to avoid things like Champion, Beast, and stuff. Those are just going to be a little too difficult for killing. Ooh. But we can look at if we want, you know, to kill Dark Hunters. Because, again, we do have this combination of uh, fire and cold, you know. So it's kind of up to us whatever we do want to fight. Star mix a lot, thank you, as well. But I'm mostly going to be avoiding the fight, the cold immunes more, I would say, because we are going to have a lot more damage from our cold. Could use an insight bow, or not good for hell playthrough. Honestly, I kind of like both of those charms because right now getting a little more mana is really helpful. Um, insight bow is all right. It's much more for the uh, if you're playing for like physical damage. The elemental damage, we're really looking for more IAS and plus two. Um, plus to, to bow and crossbow skills. Stay alive, baby. This one. The jump from Nightmare to Hell is very large, and it's one that a lot of people just aren't ready for, to put it plain and simple, because it is such a big jump. Your your character really, you have to be a lot safer. It takes a lot longer to kill things. The damage that they put out is way higher. The immunities and blah blah blah. It is hard. Like, hell is, I don't want to say where the challenge in this game actually begins, because, you know, there's still plenty of challenge in other areas, especially depending on the character. But hell is very difficult. <laughs> it is a, a giant increase. I would say, if, you, if you're going through the difficulty of this game, you might be at a 5 out of 10 when you uh, are in... Nightmare like the end of nightmare might might get all the way up to a 5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty and then when you get to hell That cranks up to like Seven and a half out of ten for act one eight out of ten and then it goes all the way up to ten out of ten as, as you go along Like it's it is a large jump But you can see moving at you know a nice pace we're doing just fine. And again, do we immediately kill everything that we shoot? No. It takes a little bit of time. But are we able to fight everything if we desire? Yes. So, you know, it's it's a little bit of like... You're not going to be moving as fast as a hammered in at this point or anything, right? But we're able to kill... All of the stuff we're not worrying about, and obviously the ham hammer is just you know above and beyond others. But 
Add straight jump. Matron stand. Nice, star. Well, I appreciate you using that here. So, running this dual spec, I really, really do like it a lot because let's say that we were running a pure cold build. First off, we would run into immunities that we physically have to kill to advance, like Korlik and things like that, that we would have no chance against. But additionally, you know, if we were getting chased and surrounded by like these vile hunters and we needed to kill them to move forward, we have that option with the exploding arrow now. So, I don't know how to get a message to auto talk when I sub. Uh, so the first time you sub, you don't, you can't talk. After that, it should give you the message for, um, for doing it. And then sometimes you have to like refresh the page. Can I carry you on reset day? I'll probably be carrying myself. So we do have the tower here. And like I had said before, we're not exactly 100% built for killing the Countess because she will be cold and fire immune. However, we still can because we do have this Valkyrie and we can always get our mercenary who is very strong now the mercenary does make me a little sad I would love to have the mercenary here and like really be using him a lot more but unfortunately because we can't bug the mercenary anymore I'm not sure it's really gonna work out very well I think he's just gonna die too often so we can kind of have him and really try and coddle him but I think it'll still be really tough. Oh, cursed. Don't want to get hit by those. Ooh. I've done, yeah, I've done eight-man playthroughs for sure. Bonnie Groove, thank you very much. We got a gem shrine. You know what that means. Let us grab... Uh, I really wanted to do a flawless amethyst, but I don't have it. So let's grab this guy. Might as well get a perfect something. We can craft something later. And here is our tower. Let's go ahead and do a run through the tower. Also, I'm going to put another point into Cold Arrow and more points into Vitality. <laughs> Gem Shrines will take the, l the most... The latest... Mm. Hold on. The, the latest interacted gem in your inventory and upgrade it. So if you have a... Oh boy. We gotta be really careful here. Archers are brutal, especially might archers. So if you've had a gem sitting in your inventory that you haven't touched in a year and then you pick up a bunch of other gems, whatever stuff, it'll take that one from the year and that'll be the one. Alright, this is... Archers are very difficult and I highly recommend you avoid them at all costs. <laughs> Could we have gone back to fight those archers? Sure. Would I ever recommend that to anybody? No. Especially Might Aura Archers and stuff. Now my Valk has died, so I can summon my own Valk, which can just be useful as a basic tank. And you can see, she still does okay as a tank. Like, she's not gonna be as strong, but she does alright. However, what's really nice is I'm just kind of waiting until I get that 2% proc for hitting. And we get that level 15 one out again. But until... Oh no, I just... I just got it right when I summoned. Unfortunate. We'll hit it again. Yeah. 
And again, there is a cold fire immune combination. And now that I have that level 15 Valk, I'll let her go ahead and take care of the uh, cold fire immune. Is awesome to see a Balazon three. Thank you, Blink. Now, the other way that you really could run this character if you didn't want to run it in the dual combination. So if you, you know, for some reason want to respec, is you could actually go for a pure cold build or something, and then maxing out your Valkyrie. You probably wouldn't want peace then because you, you would want to have your higher level Valkyrie. Um, but you know, if you have peace, you just kind of overwrite it whenever it happens. Um, that could be a way to run it. You have a little bit more cold damage, but the problem is still going to be when you get to those cold immunes that you have to pass by, like Korlik, you're going to have to literally sit there and let your Valkyrie kill Korlik. And she can do it. A max Valkyrie can kill Korlik all by herself. But it will take a, a minute. It is not going to be fast. So having, you know, the ability to at least help out and do a little bit of damage on your own, I think can be nice. But again, that's kind of up to you. It'll help with a little bit of damage as you play through. But I like, you know, how we've been able to throw cold damage. Ooh, I think I do want that. And fire damage at the monsters. I think it's been helpful. And we'll let our tank go forward again. Yeah, Divine Scepter. Don't make it add. And again, some of the beauty here is the experience is just we're, we're just leveling up perfectly fine, and it's great. It is, uh, wonderful. Eh, we'll leave that one. Does faith make sense? I mean, if you can make a faith, sure, it's, faith is always nice. Faith is expensive though. This is this is running much more budget than faith. <laughs> but mist would be better, probably. Get yourself more of the plus skills and stuff. Other mobs. Then we can just get our stalkers close. And hopefully get our Valkyrie spawned here soon. That's really what I'm waiting on. Our level 15 Valkyrie. See if she comes. Unsolved, previously solved builds. I don't know if anything is unsolved, anything. Endgame physical bow, do you choose faith or wind force? Uh I usually run faith. So even though I haven't been able to get the other uh, Valkyrie. This Valkyrie still does enough damage that she can kill the Countess. 
Yeah, the, the chance to cast from peace is low, unfortunately, but that's okay. I mean, again, that lightning enchant was making it tough for my bow. And we got another shell room. Don't hate it. So, as you see right there, is Countess possible? Oh, dang, that would have been so nice for us. The answer is yes. Countess is possible. Please. No co-rune there. But, again, it's one of those... Do you want to... And this is also a great time, by the way. Like, for instance, this is 19 life, 9 cold res. But I have enough strength. I have 60 strength that I can wear plated belts. So I can actually just come over here and do some shopping. And I can find a belt with, like, 80 life or something on it. You can find lots of stuff. I'm also going to look at gloves. Strength on that, yeah. And 35 life, 13 mana. And I'm also at the level where I can find 320s. At level 56, I believe I should be able to find some. Depends which gloves, probably, that I look at. Now, does it normally take hours and hours and hours and hours to find those? Yes. I think on average it's like 9 to 10 hours. So, you know, we're not going to do that searching, really. But, mm -hmm. hey, I don't mind looking for a better while my internet is too spotty to watch live streams. I'm a YouTube watcher, <laughs> but here is my monthly Twitch Prime. Aw, oh, thank you. Also, and there you go. do you think Blizzard should try and make D2R crossplay? 79 to life on that belt. I mean, that would be fun, Jay Shadow. And that takes very little time to do, right? And you can shop better gloves, better boots, you know, better helms, whatever stuff, just by doing that stuff. But really, gloves, boots, and belts, those are the best things to do if you have a little bit of time, if you don't mind chilling, hanging out, shopping around. You can spend 10 minutes and find some nice stuff on those. I know, S&T. So, now, like I said, if you want, you could totally go and farm Hell Countess. And as you saw, I gained, like, a level and a half in the tower. So, if I wanted, I could go and not only farm there, you know, for runes, but I could also get a lot of experience doing that, which would be fantastic. Now we level up. I'm going to put another point in Cold Arrow. And five more points into Vitality. Easy. And we can just move forward here. And again, this kind of comes down to... Oh, so especially if you get caught with Holy Freeze, this is where you can actually use your, your uh, Valkyrie to get away. <laughs> it's a great way to, to drop her down to give you room to run. As uh, it can get a little dicey out here. And more minions if we want to kill more guys. She dies quickly. Yeah, the level 3 Valkyrie is going to die quickly. That's why getting that higher level Valkyrie is actually really valuable. So you just have to, you know, like I say, it's a 2% chance. So it's not, not the best chance. But when you can get her, it can do a lot for you. But it is tough because you have to be able to hit. But even the base Valkyrie is still enough to, uh, you know, cut down on some worry. Because it does give you enough time to get away from whatever is chasing you. Thanks, Death Man. Ouch. 
And again, killing the Yetis. You know, not my favorite, but. Can be worth decent experience. Looks like our exploding arrow is doing enough here. What's up, Ricky? It's just a groovy character, man. Just plain and simple. kind of groove along. Again, you're not going to have the same kill speed that you have of the highest end builds, but you're also not going to be in a terrible position where you can't do anything, right? You're not going to run into those awful situations where nothing will die and blah blah blah. And, you know, immunities and you can't deal with them because you only do one elemental type whatever stuff you know we currently don't have the mercenary because honestly I think he's gonna just be dying too much but you know we can see we can we can, we can get him out again at some point here and see how he does there's just a lot of monsters that can just, you know, get a bunch of might aura archers and he'll be dead in a single pop, right? What nightmarish tortures took place. But we'll, we'll get Jamali out. Again, not being able to, to bug him really is annoying. So, in D2 LOD, you could actually bug the mercenary so that he wasn't targeted. So it just made it a thousand times easier. But uh, that's kind of changed here. So now we don't get that luxury anymore. It doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. He will be better off once he gets his uh, Holy Freeze going. There we go. I, can't carry I also kind of like picking up sharks and gloves because, oh look, 20 IAS. That's really nice. I'd rather have my plus two to skills right now, but still good to uh, note and maybe those roll two 20s or something next time. You bug them by essentially locking them in a room and then having them, like, port over to you. Is this the summons on playthrough? Yeah, it's the bow's on. Ah, oh, there goes the mercenary. Honestly, if I get him a three open socket helm and put like Ral or Thol or something in there, he may end up having a better chance. I, I feel like his resistances just aren't quite high enough right now and that's causing him some issues. Could also make him smoke if we want, since we did get that Lum rune. 50 all res may end up working out for him. Why do I do any more strategy guide playthroughs? Oh, like the terrible ones? I think we did them, right? Are there more? Anya quest does not help your mercenary, no, just you. So yeah, I think smoke would actually be a really big help for him. We may make that and give it a try. Because that was just like a couple fire bolts from some mages and he, he died, so. Need to try something else out for him. Not looking good here. Level three, tricky maps. Sorry, Ricky, didn't mean to ignore you. I am 
Nice and easy. Let's go ahead really fast and go back to normal. Paper airplane guide update. What do you need? And get a two open socket armor. Nef Lum. This makes smoke, which is 50 all resistances, which is fantastic. I mean, this would max our resistances out. However, I would lose that fifth level 15 Valkyrie and two to Amazon skills, so I don't want to do it. But, like we said, for a mercenary, currently the DR of 10 is nice, but I think getting him maxed on res is going to be much more helpful. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hardcore for easy leveling to 99? Nothing. Nothing is easy to 99. Probably your hammered in is going to be your best, though, solo. Yes, source also not bad. Anyways, back to hell. And now we can see his resistances are a lot better. Instead of 3%, now he's at 53%. So that might help him out a little bit more. And then again, we still do need... Um, you know, if we can get him a better helm, we could get his res maxed out, which would be very helpful. So, Hell LK armor rack can Ooh. Monarch always drop. Do you think drop. that the ladder reset Should will come after 2.5 release? Thanks for the great content. I mean, they'll probably come hand in hand, right? That's my assumption. So now we'll see if our mercenary can survive a little bit more. And again, this is why I'm saying get a three open socket crown or helm of some sort. Put Ralort Thol in there or whatever it is that you need and boost your mercenary's resistances. Also, other items that you could be giving to your mercenary, you could give them obedience. That would be an amazing weapon. You can give them honor, right? The biggest thing is you really want to find something like a partisan or a bill, some sort of exceptional base at least. Obviously, an elite base would be great if he can use it, but finding some sort of base like that can be really helpful. You don't want to put it in, like, a normal base. If you put it in a normal armor base or weapon base, he's just not going to quite get enough damage. So. Yeah, I think ladder reset in 2.5 will be hand-in-hand, -hand, though. And I mean, because I have such good resistances as well right now, you can see I'm not having to, like, panic, freak out at getting blasted by a couple fireballs from these guys. Whereas normally, that's that's going to be one of those panic pieces, right? I'm going to be like, oh no, I have to run away, because every single shot will deal half my life. We level up again, another point in Cold Arrow, more vitality. We'll just keep that train going. How long did it take me to recover? I took one day off. And yeah, you can see our mercenary now. He's still not going to be, you know, immune to everything or anything. We'll still have to give him a little health and stuff. But he's doing way better. He's actually able to survive more because he has resistances. So again, resistances are just so important. There. Always be careful of dual immunes. That can be nasty. <laughs> Full controller run? Maybe someday. I 
might be dropping a couple frames, but as long as it doesn't die, I'm gonna be happy. Just now start to realize the importance of resistances. Resistances are, are king, man. They are so important. I don't want to get hit by that cold enchant. Alright, let's go here and shoot him from this side. There we go. Move. Jay Lovell, thank you! Move. Hi, Llama. Are you still speed running ever? Uh, I haven't done a ton of it, but we'll probably get in and do some more. Now, something to also note with all of this. Thank you very much, Jessman, and Rotten Luck as well. Is you have to remember that I came into hell at level 55. And you can definitely see the benefit that every single level I've gotten has added to this character. So you should hopefully be able to see and recognize that like, oh wow, if I spend a little bit of time and do farm up until level 65, 67, blah, 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 whatever it is. Then I'm going to come into hell and be even more dominant. Because again, I am only level 58 right now. And that would be considered, you know, below level. Right? Under level at this point. So, it's good to, uh, you know, just think about that and think about how much time you do want to dedicate to farming and whatnot. I can't. Seven Druid's actually not bad. He's, again, not going to be the fastest, but... Will he be alright? For sure. Summon I mean, Necro is safer and better, but, I mean, again, it's, it, this isn't, you know, what is the perfect build. This is kind of for people who want to not play the same builds that they've played before. How many times have you played a Summon Druid, you know? Everybody's played a Summon Necro, but how many times have you played a Summon Druid? How many times have you played a Boazon through Hell? Things like that. That's what I think is really fun about, like, the series and all this stuff, is it's, it's still really nice to, uh, you know, be able to play those differences. Sivirbs. 5% fast run walk, 3% chance of uh, getting MF. I mean, it's, uh, it's okay. It's still probably trash. Tried Summoner and he bored you to death? I mean, Summoner is not built for speed. Hey man, somebody had to do it, Jigsaw. How else are we gonna get all our rockets? Take it over the 18 life GC? That's kind of my thoughts. saying you should 99 grind on the summon druid. Oh god, no. What is the devil's toll? So this Saturday, I'm hosting a race with my team uh, method, and it is going to be pay to win is what I wanted to call it, but they, they prefer Devil's Toll. You have to pay gold to advance every act. So let's say you beat Act 1. Cool, congratulations. You want to get to Act 2? You got to pay 50,000 gold to Warriv. If you don't have the gold, you got to go back and farm the gold. 
So I thought it just seemed really fun because you're gonna end up having to get, you know, multi-millions of gold over the course of the run. Plus, it's going to have all of the, you know, like, all, you're gonna be speedrunning, but also having to figure out your gold purposes, and then if you're dying and needing to repair telecharges and all that stuff, that's costing gold that you're not using at the end. I mean, Bender's gonna slaughter us all. So, you know, and Indrik. It's okay, Jim. I invited you so you and me could play in the back. <laughs> the lineup is gonna be sick. We've got Bender, Indrik. Hold on, let me get the full list. Uh, where, where, is, where is that list? Yeah. Um, Zegers and Mr. Hollywood are gonna cast it. As well as uh, a guy named Grant who was casting an event before. Let me find it really fast. Um... There's the general rules. Dang, that doesn't have the participants. It's basically the top speedrunners. All the top speedrunners in D2. And then Jim. Just kidding, Jim. You're, you're in there. Jim's gonna beat me and, and rub it in my face. And he should. Another point in cold, more points to vitality. We're level 59. And we can decide if we want to shoot cold or fire at Indariel. I think fire is actually going to end up doing more damage. Because she just has such bad fire res. Teo is out of town for the race, so Hi, he could not make it. Can you please make a YouTube playlist of all your Grail streams in chronological order? I really oh enjoy the YT videos, but the stream is harder to enjoy with no sound because I'm not subscribed. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Director. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a lower res wand. I keep forgetting that. I mean, we're just, we're crushing Indario so fast. I'm like, eh, do I need it? We'll definitely want it on the later bosses. And Dariel, I feel pretty fine. Now, one thing to note is uh, that was pretty fast for farming. And again, if you wish to farm, you can totally farm, right? 100% you can farm it. All right, so let's put some of these guys over there. Let's get rid of Vidalas and Zephyr can go. Oh wait, what was that ring? 10 FCR, 15 fire, nah. Okay, we will sell. Oh, actually I want the 25 to mana still. We'll sell all that and go like that. Two to martial arts. Eh, always, always good to look. So, what do we do now? We give ourselves a clap because we have just beaten Act One of Hell. And I mean, again, it was a breeze. It was a breeze. Uh, you guys just, just walked your way through there. No worries whatsoever. Let's get Jamali back. There's two open socket helm. Mm. 
we could do that for him and just try and get him a little more res, but he'll be fine. And as he levels up, he'll also gain a little bit more as well, which will be nice. Jamali, you died so fast. I want my level 15 Valkyrie. One day. He was indeed not fine. Yeah. Again. I really wish we could bug our mercenaries. <laughs> It would help him so much. Fire enchanted. Yeah, we'll leave it alone. I mean, they changed the 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 guides. The biggest issue is the Merce bug, because that was, I don't want to say a big part of all my guides, but you know, it's definitely a helpful piece, being able to bug the mercenary. So now you don't really get to have that option anymore. But it's all right. I mean, we still can crush. You play a lot of D3, but D2 looks more challenging. Yeah, D2 is a lot more challenging. Oh, good luck, BC Rider. D3, and this is, you know, one of my problems with D3 and where I'm, what I'm scared of D4 and just kind of a lot of, you know, games nowadays. It feels like a lot of games have gotten easier uh, to the point of it being, you know, boringly easy. They, they won't allow you to fail. That's the that's the biggest issue I have with a lot of games. They do everything in their power to make sure you can't fail. Sound on. But then the game is just boringly easy. Dr. Lambency, enjoy your audio. Thank you so much. Thank you for the Daddy Bezos sub. So that's pretty much always my problem with it. Everybody's like, you know, why don't you like these games, blah, 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 and stuff. And it's like, they don't let you fail. They don't let you make a bad build. They don't let you, you know, get to an area and it'd be too hard and you can't get past it. And you have to go back and farm and figure it out. Go grind somewhere for a bit. They're like, no, it needs to always be. As soon as someone gets into an area, they can destroy it. Like, ugh. Like, there was literally a point when I was going through Diablo 3 where my character was standing in the middle of like 50 mobs attacking him and I just like stood up and went and grabbed some water and came back and my character was still just standing there and hadn't lost any life and all the mobs were around him like hua, hua. I was like this is silly So, that's my problem with a lot of the games. You know, it's a good point, cats. Right, it's like you have a stacked, you know, character in normal in Diablo 2, but this is just not a stacked character at all, just a normal character chilling. Do I get Melody Bow? No, I haven't found a... Oof. Cold Fire Cursed. I haven't found a co-rune. 
Like I said, we could definitely go farm Hell Countess for Ko Rune. What is the drop chance of Ko from Hell Countess? Can somebody give me that number? I'm actually curious. terrible. Not amazing, but... Well, everything is the same odds from Hellforge. Do I need a Mercy to deal with Countess? No, my Valkyrie can deal with Countess. We have another skill point, another cold arrow, and more to vitality. And I didn't do the Den of Evil. We could go back and do the Den and do Radovan and pick up a couple more skill points, which would be very helpful. I think I also did skip Nightmare Radovan. So honestly, doing that would be solid as well, because really just getting additional skill points is super helpful. So let's go ahead and do that. Trash, trash, trash. Uh, no, nah, Ubers is gonna be different. I have a lower res wand, so. That'll be better for Den of Evil. Even just a few skill points here has just been so much damage added. <laughs> Weird caffeine. I'm just using this uh, edge bow. I hear foul creatures about. 35 IAS, and then I've got it in a plus one the bone crossbows. Honestly, getting my mercenary for down here would be very good because he'll be pretty fast in killing stuff. Definitely will be helpful. Between him and my Valkyrie and me, plenty of damage. Will I hate my life into a physical Zon playthrough? I mean, it'll be hard. I'm not sure. That'll actually be really difficult to do. Like, it just does not play through well. The last time I did it, I mean, we could just run, like, full Valk build with it, I guess, and it'll be more of a Valkyrie. Tried it, wouldn't recommend. Yeah, the last time I did it, I spent get some arrows. I spent like, I did like 200 Nightmare Mephisto runs. I was just having fun doing it until I got Bereza and then I did it. So Crushing Blow helps. It does half though for range. So it's not as good, but it does still do something. I do have access to Insight. Which still doesn't have any IAS, but at least does have some okay damage. Is the audio really low? Everybody's been saying that. I don't know what's been going on with it. It's okay. Yeah, it's like as high as I can get it, and it's just not, not high enough. I don't know. I don't know why the output 
maybe I maybe I need to check my OBS. Like the audio output is really low or something. No clue. No. Cole Stoney, thank you. Appreciate the Prime sub. Reminder to everybody, if you have a Twitch Prime sub, it does not auto renew, but it does help the channel out a lot. Counts the exact same for me, so I really appreciate it. You use it here, because you do have to renew it every single month. One annoying part about it. Daddy Bezos is trying to keep it to himself. did it. Alright. We'll crush him from here. Beautiful. Not too bad. We'll take our plus one skills. Thank you very much. And we'll add that to Cold Arrow. And come back here and go for this. And let me put this on real fast. Yeah, we did end up making peace. It's been very nice. When we can get the proc. I can't carry which is so hard to get. I mean, Javazon does just have more damage. Again, this is... This guided playthrough, all these guided playthroughs aren't here to be like... And this is how the Boazon is better than the... <laughs> the Javazon. If you're looking for that from these... Uh, I just got bad news for you. This is to say, hey, for those of you who wanted to play through with a different character. This is how you do it. And still have fun and still make it through just fine and all that, you know. I can't. So you just gotta, you know, temper your expectations. Spicy over there. You know, puke white. Ow. I'm just gonna go past you. I don't really want to fight him. He's kind of a, a mess. Sometimes you just got to recognize that certain monsters are spawned with curse and might and garbage and uh, they're just not going to be fun to fight. Plain and simple. So we'll just take it nice and slow from the back. I 
I mean, the Icy Veins is essentially my book of guides, you know. Another skill point. Put it there. Into Cold Arrow. Just gonna keep boosting that up. And Vitality. And sewer is level three. Impossible. Really what? Nice Lord, then have fun. Perfectly natural thing to say. And the nice thing with Freezing Arrow is we do explode all these corpses. So, it's helpful. Do what we can, Barley. Can you feed the Valk potions? No. When she dies, she dies. Where'd he teleport to? and easy. <laughs> I loved my rogue playthrough. It was like super fun. Takes a little bit of time, but book a skill. Nice and easy. Probably should have used lower res on him, actually. Saigon's two-piece bonus is really nice. The 30 IS from the gloves. Yeah. Super, super nice. The rogue playthrough should be on YouTube, yeah. Another skill point, more into cold arrow, and we can go to the far oasis and continue forward. Impossible. And I really love farming around here for levels and experience. Just like Far Oasis and Lost City, Dry Hills, all, all these areas. I think it's a great place to really kind of just get some easy levels. Decent leveled monsters and stuff. So, if you are looking to run around and get a little extra experience, I think this is a decent spot. 
But there's also a lot of spots, honestly, that'll be fine. Twenty to life. Not quite enough. Lots of cold fire and chance. Good one, Daniel. If you try weapon swapping, it might get him out. Maybe. Where's that aura coming from? Over here? Just so much stuff to kill out here. It's fantastic. No, not the extra defense. It's, uh, like I say, it's the way you can bug them so they don't get targeted. Now, if you do have the, uh, mm, not maulers, the assailant monsters up here, they can be a little bit annoying in the Lost City, so I wouldn't really go fight them as much, but other than that, a lot of, a lot of great packs. Like I say, just out in the deserts overall, plus you get nice wide open zones, makes it easier for killing and fighting. And uh, just an easy place to really pick up some of that experience. Ancient tunnels if we want to go down in there. Now, something you'll have to remember with ancient tunnels is it is a very high level area. But cold damage is good in here. Let's see if we can do any damage here. We can do a little bit. Beautiful. Plenty of experience to be had down in the tunnels as well. And I mean, this is a solid area too. This is... This is a tough one. Let's check out the reflex bow. Ooh! Three to bow and crossbow skills. Let's go. We'll end a cold arrow. Now, I don't even know. Obviously, we can't make miss. We don't have cham goal. I don't even know what we can make in that. Let's go take a look at the bows again. I doubt there's anything to be made, but we could probably just put a couple, like, shells in it, I've been and it'll up be, on it'll be great. <laughs> Getting excited to chase some huge dongs myself. Thanks, combat. Appreciate that. And that's the thing. We don't even have to make the rune word. Again, we're going for the, the skills. This is crushing through this area level 85 pretty fast. I'm not going to lie. This is a pretty solid... Uh, solid snag here. Now, 60 dexterity. We'll go ahead and add to dexterity. So now we can use it. What are the frames for a reflex bow, Warren? I can't. Yeah, Griffins wouldn't do anything for me here, really. I am working on my own Grail and using that app. It wasn't nice. going as fast as I wanted, so I googled how can I get more dongs faster. Not what I hoped for. Didn't quite get. What did it recommend? Now that does add 10 to all attributes, so I'm still a little bit short. I 
has bad frames. That's okay, what are they? Because right now I think I'm on the what, 10? or 11 but I mean I can put a couple shells in this thing 35 at 11 so 56 at 10 I mean like I say for the all that plus probably worth it Probably worth it. Let's see if there's anything. 40 fast run with boots are nice, but I'd rather have my 39 light res. Mm, call to arms, harmony. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing really good for bows. Obviously that missed, but we have shale, shale, and honestly that'd probably just be fine enough. Maybe I just put five shales in it, try and, try and get to the, uh, get to the 89. Where is that one shell rune I have? There it is. So two shells will get us to 35, three will get us to the 56. Oops. Soul, soul. Ah, oh, gosh darn it. I use the other soul rune for the insight. All right, well, we still need to level a couple times anyways, uh, but we can we can jam another shell into there. Or we can go do a couple Countess runs. What do you guys think? I'll let you guys decide. Would you rather we just kind of go forward and then if we get it we get it or would you like us to go and try and farm a shale rune maybe get a co rune or something I'm open to either one cuz sometimes people when they're watching the guide to playthroughs they're like I like watching you farm Could also try and push forward to lower Kuras and then, yeah, but then we'll probably get whatever, no, who knows. Five tries on the shale. Because maybe we get a Ko as well. 10% chance. Alright, let's get the Act 2 stuff first. And then we can try five tries. I'm down for that. Because again, it'll be not bad experience for us. Now that we're a higher level, we're actually gonna push through the tower at a lot faster speed as well. Again, I did come into hell under level. Which is important to note. So, should be pretty smooth now, I would imagine. And still more experience to be gained. And that's really one of my favorite parts about just playing these sorts of characters and things like this, is this character 
as you've seen, can really tackle a lot of areas. And it's not bad getting the farm and any of this stuff. Like, we've been farming up perfectly fine, which has been nice. It, and it's just been it's just been kind of simple and the higher the more time that you spend to grind and grab you know a few more items that'll add some more skills the more that you you know just do any of that stuff the better it is why am i not using decoy eh, i mean we could use decoy we totally could use it i'm just i'm using the valkyrie and that's fine for me But, you know, like, her damage is solid. She just went through the Ancient Tunnels, which is an area level 85, you guys. And crushed it pretty quick, honestly. I just have one point in Valkyrie. It's nice to see that stuff. Now, snakes will be difficult because snakes are cold immune. I hope I know what I'm doing. So, it's gonna be a little bit spicier here. Obviously, we do have our multi enchant. Nah, strafe is not going to be helpful. Put a decoy up there for you. Perfect. Nice and quickie. And I'm really not looking to fight these guys. Obviously, if we wanted to, we could shoot from up here. Eh, yeah, it's going fast enough, I guess. But, yeah, we gotta deal with these bone warriors as well. They're gonna get resummoned. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna get out of there. Exploding arrow still doing great? Yeah, I mean, considering we have maxed and only one point in fire arrow, so it's not even like you know, full max. It's doing perfectly fine. It does what it needs to do. And what it needs to do is... It needs to get us... We'll get max arrows again. It needs to kill off the cold immunes, you know? That's the thing. Snakes are going to be a giant pain. But... With that... We can go just fast enough. That works out all right. So. What level am I at this point? I am 62, almost 63. So, we'll just get through this piece again. In Act 2, and then go forward. Read her again. <laughs> Or go back, I mean. We'll go back and try uh, try a couple Countess runs for you guys. Shaco drop would be fantastic. Though, our, our Rock Stopper is super solid. So, I'm not, like, upset with my helmet at all. Where's a good place to farm for a Melody base? I mean, it's tough because you need that three open socket, so you're probably just gonna, you know, I mean, you really just want to kill a lot of monsters and pray. 
kind of the problem. It's hard to say exactly where you want to go. Another point in cold arrow. Nightmare Cows could be that potential spot to go really farming for it, would be my thought. Bro, I need this dude to get off of me. Finally. Yeah, cold enchanted. That's okay. You say we don't have to kill every single monster. Now, this is actually going to be a pretty annoying area because it's cold immunes and fire immunes. So we're probably going to have to go a little slow through the arcane sanctuary. Always just layer it down with our uh, Valkyries. And just whatever monster is in front, that's the one that we fight. I bet one sub that it's three or four way. What? It's gonna be a first way. Easy, easy money. This will probably be one of the, the worst areas that you're going to have to fight through. Kind of want to group them together again as well. So, yeah, I've got peace. Slow and steady. Now you can also look to make mad dashes if you get past a group. And that's a great way to kind of help yourself, right? Now, it's a little risky. So you want to be careful. Obviously we can kill all of those monsters as we showed, but it takes a little bit of time. Is this controller friendly? I don't know. I would imagine so, but... Those ghoul lords are really the annoyance. Avoiding those is going to be uh, most desired, I would say. Which immune is lowest in hell? Lightning immune. Well, there's a lot of lightning immunes, but they can drain. Um, which one is actually like the least seen? I, I don't know. Physical immune, probably, right? Magic immune, there you go, yeah, magic immune. There's no magic immunes. Damage reduced by two. Nothing at area one, not a first way. But that wasn't too bad. I felt like we made it through all right. Let's go for a second way. Yeah, my mercenary's just been dying a lot, sadly. And 
just have to be a little careful, but we're pretty good in most cases here. Hi, Nupsy. <laughs> Jeez. Truth. I do love having the teleport capabilities just to kind of get us ahead a little bit. There's some monsters we don't really want to fight, namely these ghoul lords. And gosh dang it. Second way. Good day. All right, let's go for third way. impatient and teleports through it all <laughs> which is totally fine to do as well son of a it is an honor to serve you. well hopefully you have not forthwayed the arcane sanctuary Gifted a tier one sub to AC underscore thirty six. Thank you, Slain. A pity sub. Wow. And again, the nice thing about jumping forward with this character and stuff is we do have the ability to freeze, so it makes it way less scary. Since we can always just turn around and freeze everything. Impossible. Except the ghoul lords, of course. Pity sub indeed. I don't want your pity subs. I mean, I'll accept them, but. You know, can we make them just like excitement subs, happy subs? Let's just call them something different. You know, that's all. It's on teleport frames, yeah. 10 years to teleport. I mean, yeah, the ghosts have increased drop rate of runes. Okay. So you can actually tell whichever symbol is missing here is the um, what it is. So here we know that it's going to be circle because there's no circle right there. If you go out here, circle is your tomb. Fun little... Obviously, you don't need to see that. Just a fun note. Ow! I don't like you. These Hellcats are nasty. But again, thankfully, we're dual spec and we can deal with them.
Okay, if we want to kill these devourers and all these bosses, we can. If not, there's a lot of babies around there. We don't gotta. But time for Tal Rasha's tomb. And you can always reset your tomb if you get a lot of monsters that you don't really want in there. So that is a uh, true thing. Three open socket blade bow could make melody in that if we get melody. So it is it is an option. This isn't really great mobs in here, honestly. Ghoul Lords is annoying. Well, we can go run around a little bit. Now, obviously, it doesn't have any plus two, uh, you know, skills on it. But a blade bow shoots. What are the frames on a blade bow? I mean, they got to be pretty good. You're going to have very fast shooting, so... Some trade-offs. The stat investment is high on it. That is the one downside. Again, it is going for more of a higher damage bow. Like, this is, you know, if you're going for, like, an okay physical bow, you could probably do some combination there that's not bad. So I'm not really killing all stuff here. I'm just more running around trying to find where stuff is. And that's because, like I said, most of the stuff down here is going to have some sort of cold moon piece to it. Which is annoying. Kill. Oh. Let's do this. And do this. And go here. Alright, let's get ready for Duriel. So, we'll get our lower resist wand over here. And we can move that. Let's get some potions. Yes, high end gear physical is better, but I mean, that is very high end gear. Drink our Thawing potions again for the added cold resist, like we've done before. Oh no, my short strength. Ah, where am I missing ten to strength from? Oh, from the yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, and we can go in to fight Duriel. Slow resist. Oh, I say pretty good damage. Now I do wish I had my bigger Valkyrie, but not a huge deal. We still do really good damage to Duriel, and we can actually front him pretty well because we have 77 cold resists here. So we're we're actually able to take him out pretty well. I would love a Raven Frost or something. That would be amazing. But I'll take it as we got it. We can cheese him, but it's very hard to do. I'm not gonna try and teach the perfect cheese. For most people, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. And like I say. And if your cold res is really low, maybe look at getting just a little bit of cold res gear. Daryl only does cold and physical, so you don't have to worry about other stuff near as much. You're going to be okay. And we can just... Move out of the way here, get a couple nice shots in on him. Really, it's a pretty uh, simple kill overall. Okay. 
Plus you have your dodge and avoid and all that stuff, which helps as well, so. Nice and easy. Down he goes. How easy was that? Right? Act two, hell completed. Level 63 and a half. Flying through it. Got a rare amulet there. We're feeling good. What more do you need, everybody? What more do you need? Some more arrows. Sell this. One to shadow disciplines. Twelve all res. Eight strength. Two to dexterity. I mean, I have 19 all res, so I'd be sacking seven all res for some strength and dex. Probably just not quite worth it. I really wish that that was plus to bone crossbows. That would have been amazing. But that's okay. We've got a couple uh, stamina pots. Talk to Mr. Jurhan here. And moving on to Act 3. And again, at this point, we can go back and do some Countess, because people were wanting Countess. I'm good with it. I'm good with having a little fun at the county, grinding a couple times, and uh, just seeing how our grind goes, you know? Let's look around. Easy clap, llama. Congrats. Easy clap. Now we can find skillers, so ooh, thirty to life is probably. I'm gonna put that over the twenty-five to mana. I like thirty to life. Thank you very much, Chinovsky. How are you doing? Show and tell gear. Um, we did a full gear rundown at the start. But essentially, edge. There's kind of a quick run over of some stuff. Just looking for whatever stuff is plus to skills. It's the main piece. what build is the Amazon set built for? Uh, it's built for this, honestly. Which is really nice. So if you, yeah, if you have Mavina's set, it's actually a really great budget build for, um, playing this style. For playing either Pure Frost or Frost Fire. Either one. So, highly recommend it. There we go, there's our tower. Impossible. Like, it's, it's really a good time. Because you get a lot of plus to skills off of it and stuff, so it ends up being really nice for all that. Almost got the level up. There we go. Another point to cold arrow, more vitality. Dang, Barley. It's insane. Another cold physical immune. You 
<laughs> it happens, man. Is that boss? No, just regular mobs. That's a pretty easy down into the tower. And again, the experience, I mean, even, you know, we're level 63. 64 now, I mean, we gained like almost an entire level just working our way down into the tower super quickly. Not even like a worry. of an awesome stream by a handsome dude. Wisdom has been chasing you, but you've always been faster. Shell! Thank you, Binary. Okay, so now we have two shells. So we can shift to that bow. And if we get one more soul rune... Or, an, obviously, another shale rune. We can triple shale that bow and just go for shooting off like a madman. It should be the same exact speed then. If I'm not mistaken. Still barley? No! What happens when you try to redeem it? That's weird. Yeah, I need a little bit more dexterity for the other bow. So we'll, uh... We'll do the next couple levels, all dexterity. be good to go. Hmm. Very strange. Is there a place to farm for jewels? Lower Kuros is good jewels. Cows is good jewels. I'm just killing a lot of stuff. Excited for the weekend? Isn't it only Tuesday? I am excited for the race on the weekend, though. If that's what you mean. Oh, that's what you mean? Okay. <laughs> and yes. Yes, I am. One to bow and crossbow. 187 dexterity. We'll pass on that one. Not quite our jam, is it? Yes, the race is public knowledge. You can tweet it out, retweet it, talk about it, all the fun. Good time. One to offensive auras. 
brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Kano's gonna be in the race. We're gonna get time. We're gonna have fun with it. Going for rank 199. I wasn't exactly planning on it, but may maybe we'll figure it out. I don't know. Violating NDA about D4. What? I haven't said anything about D4. I, I don't know anything to say. No, ladder's not this weekend. I'm doing a hosting a race this weekend. Offensive or is GC over there? I mean, again, leveling from this is great because we do want to level up, anyways, a little bit. So I don't mind it. High chance we won't get south and run FCR pieces, need a shot to the staff and also experience problems. I mean it's players eight, so I'm hoping that'll nullify experience problems. But yeah, there's gonna be a lot of wild stuff for all the what things you find, and I mean, I think it's just gonna be a mess of a race in such a fun way, you know? It's not supposed to be a perfectly balanced everything. It's supposed to just be sloppy, and some people get some things, some people get other things, some people have trouble finding gold. Am I on players eight right now? No, I'm on players one. We probably could go up to like players three. You get to choose whatever character you like, except sorceress. Race to a million gold? Nah, first it's gonna be way more than a million. In total, I think it's gonna be like four to five million gold. Uh, okay, and we'll go dexterity now. You think there's a clear winner? Druid, right? Druid's the clear winner? That cause you always pick Druid. <laughs> You're not racing Druid? What? No way. I was I was banking on you running Druid. It makes me sad now. I don't know if there's a clear winner. I think Assassin and Paladin both have their benefits. And you could argue either one. Druid also does have his own argument. I mean, again. Paladin, another Amrun. Okay, so we're one Amrun and a chipped Amethyst away. Um, Paladin is, is obviously very solid. But... But, I mean, like, if you look at speedruns, Assassin and Druid run the same times as the Paladin. You know? Kind of my thoughts. They're all very similar. Fort Rune. 
We have to be able to farm stuff for gold. Yeah, I mean, they kill stuff at similar speeds ish. Ah, oh, I love that armor. So fun. Armor, ah, he's got a smoke already. Armor's not the issue for him. Yeah, I love the piece. It's a hell speed run. Key of Terror and a Tal Rune. <laughs> Beautiful. Twenty one fire res, sixteen to life. I, I just don't know if that still beats 79 to life, unfortunately. I mean, it's very nice. If it had Frost Nova, maybe. Let's try, uh... I'm gonna go Players 3. I just want to level up once. We're one am, soul, or shale away from having this shale rune, and then we can swap over. And I think that actually be really fun. So let's try and get there. I can't. I can't. Let's see if we can do it. Players' eight effects drops as well. Okay. So you could also probably go around the LK and pop everything on players' eight and find one of those rooms. That's okay. We're having a little fun with this. Could also, of course, just go back to Nightmare and farm Nightmare for Amsol Shale. However, this does give us the chance to drop, you know, a co rune or something really cool. So. Kinda hoping for that. Yeah, most efficient is always isn't always most fun. I mean, quite often, probably not. A lot of times it's fun to be inefficient and try and make it work. Running. I didn't yeah. realize the air could drop some super chests. 
Got one last night in an own. What? Nice. I mean, that's one of the best things about it. It can drop Burr Rune. Okay, we should get our level up here. Perfect. Dexterity. And players one. And cold arrow. Beautiful. Burr is the highest room that you get from LK. Doing the super chest. Great place to get him, man. Alright, 26 to life on that. Very nice. Another key of terror? Are you kidding me? The keys, man. Two to defensive auras. Darn. <coughs> Let's do that. Um, all right, we'll get rid of the blade bow. We can put these away here. Put that into there. Alright. So we can swap over. That does drop my strength, so we'll swap that as well for now. And we can just grab our shales. And yeah, we only have two souls and two ams, I believe. We can actually check our ams real fast. One, two... How many bowls do I have? Two, that's all right. So, when we get the new, or the next, uh, ooh, 99 to life. We do lose a slot for it, but 99 to life is pretty darn good. Hard to argue against that. Put that over there for now. And again, we'll drop some duplicates. Trash that, trash those. Move these around. And let's get all our regular potions out. Perfect. Yeah, we could cube those gems for, for more rejuves if we want. I guess I can do that to show everybody that as well. I need more potions in. So, if you take a regular gem. One, two, three. One, two, three. You get a full rejuve. Three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, th three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Just a nice way to get a couple extra rejuvenations. And those get you the full rejuves. We have gone shale, shale into this bow so far. And again, the whole point is we're looking for plus to skills, right? So, 
the benefit, the big benefit right here is this has three to skills in it. So I'm just shoving two shales because there's not really anything good. Obviously, if I could make a mist or something, that would be great, right? Like, let's, let's show mist on the screen here. Mist would be fantastic. Plus three to all skills, 20 IAS, right? 40 all resistances, freezes target, blah, blah, blah. This would be amazing. But this requires a cham rune and a goal rune. Eh, you know, and I also get the concentration or everything, right? I mean, this would be gorgeous. We don't have cham and, and goal for this. This is a budget we're just running around. So I was using this edge bow, which had 35 IAS, one to bow and crossbow skills, 10, you know, all attributes, blah, 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 whatever. But shifting over to this has just been, it's just really nice. And I just want to get the IAS up on this. If I can get this up to 56, which just one more shell rune will do, then that'll put me in another really good spot for it. Because um, then that'll get me to the next break point. So I'm just looking for boosting up plus to skills. Because again, every plus to skill is going to be um another point for freezing arrow and exploding arrow of damage and that really is going to increase the damage it's really just going to do a lot i don't know what else i'd really want to throw into it i mean if we had some jewels with like resistances or something we could throw that in there potentially you know but you know we could also put like rowls or whatever stuff to increase the exploding arrow damage But really, I mean, I'm just going for IAS on it because my skills are where my main damage is coming from. It's my main, no. my main man, so. Loki, thank you. And again, I'm focusing more on my cold damage, so I'm gonna ignore him. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, I've got two AM and two Soul. Two Thol, I think. We're, we're like really close to getting our, whatchamacallit, our, our next Shao Rune. Teleport past those guys as Thorn Hulks are just big old tanks. Ooh, that's annoying. I can't. Cold immune, cold enchanted, things like that are still a pretty big issue. If you did get a pull run from your forge or maybe your countess runs, whatever it is, making yourself a wisdom could honestly be really nice. We can, we can show that in a second here. Let me... So Wisdom is a new rune word that they added. Gives yourself 33% piercing attack, which is nice. A little bit of bonus AR, mana steal, energy, which are okay. Five mana per kill, which is huge, and cannot be frozen, which is really the big thing, because again, we can't use shields. So really, the, the piercing attack and the cannot be frozen are, are big for this. Um, so that's what we'd kind of be aiming for right there. If we... Uh, should be co instead. Pull's too expensive. I agree. Pull is too expensive for it. I can't. I think they wanted to create more rune words for for pull, but I don't like it. I can't. Impossible. There's nothing down there. Obviously, if you can get something like a Raven Frost or something, that's fantastic. And this is where again. Going and, and running, like, you know, 
Hell, or I mean Nightmare Mephisto, Hell and Dario, like running these areas, doing that those Countess runs, doing Nightmare Cows, killing stuff over and over again. All of that is going to actually be very beneficial to this character because even though she is elemental and a lot of the damage comes from elemental, so she's not 100% physical, like, you know, reliant or anything, the more that you can get in terms of just pure, um, what I say? the more that you can get in terms of gear for a character like this, really it does a lot. It really is a big help. Because she's just going to be... You know, she just needs a lot of plus to skills. She needs some resistances. She needs some, you know, whatever things that she can get there. And so, having that stuff is super helpful. And not having it really hurts a lot. Exactly, nothing crazy, GZ baby. You can buy one, J Stim, if you want a three open socket. Just go to Far Act too. Normal. The Valk is a tank. Now, if I get the cast off of the level 15 for my piece, then she's really nice. If I just have my level 3 one, yeah. I know it's not dead. It's okay with me. Mm, just depends the mob. Certain mobs just won't freeze and whatever. It doesn't have to do with resistance, it's just... But that is a very nice part about this character. You do get to freeze most things. Most monsters are going to be frozen from your freezing arrow, which is nice. I mean, like I said, exploding arrow is not only holding up in hell, we don't have any synergies on it. And it still is holding up. That's the that's the beauty of it. It's it's really it really works out nicely. And again, I'm only level 66. As you level up and start to get your points across into Fire Arrow as well and get that maxed, both of them are going to be do decent. And then the more plus bow skills that you can get from, you know, whatever gear and charms and those things, which aren't crazy expensive things to get or anything. But, you know, if we could get a nice bow, let's say we could get a mist where we get that plus six, you know, a three and then plus three or something. I mean, that stuff ends up being huge really does a lot for you know this character or if you just run full map set or something which isn't even that crazy got our waypoint Let's see if this exits down it does not interesting I thought it might I can't. Impossible. Impossible. 
impossible. <laughs> Apparently. Could go into the arachnid lair for some farming if we wanted. This is true. I'd rather just go back to ancient tunnels, man. We crushed it in the tunnels. That'd be a great place to just get more experience. Maybe find something cool. But also, again, just going and doing like Helendariel a few times can be really beneficial. Oh god, we have souls. Yeah, Ragnar Lair is gonna be decent as well, though. You are you are correct. And this is also where having Decoy and Valkyrie are very helpful. Okay, I think we're on the four right now. Should be five soon. A little uh, safety TP. Oh god. leg only. I mean, we did the punch barb, so. How many times have I beaten Diablo 2? Thousands. Okay. I do have this cold immune, so it's not my favorite area. I can't. But we can always kill them with our exploding arrow. there. Whew. It can be nasty out here for sure. Chance it is not fun. I really do hate cold enchant. I can't. All right, let's go back. Act three is always tough. Everywhere, always. Yeah, cold enchant plus amp damage. Ugh. Gross. Pair, buy more of those. So we can come out and try and fight them more one at a time in smaller groups. more helpful. Also got a level 15 Valk, that's nice. That's 
Nice. I mean, I appreciate, I've always appreciated anybody who's showed up to my channel. Even when I have a thousand people watching, 20,000 people watching, 10 people watching. I, I don't really get caught up in the numbers, to be honest, of it. To me, it's always just, you know, whoever wants to take the time to spend their time here, it's always appreciated. I worry about how many it is, you know? Even when I'm jackhammering away, exactly. Solve and found cannot be frozen? It's just gonna be really hard to find cannot be frozen for this character. That's gonna be the unfortunate part. The shield is where you're generally gonna get that slot, so. So like I say, when you get into really tough situations like this, the best thing you can do is find yourself a space away so you can just fight them one at a time. You don't want to try and fight giant groups of these things. Now, I could also go back and go farming, and that's the other piece, right? Like, we do have the option to go and farm, you know, just tons of... Mephisto, and Nightmare, Helen Dariel, Normal, you know, whatever. So. Gorgeous. Okay, now we'll pop this. He was not. I mean, yeah, Death Sash would be a nice one to get if we, you know, found that. Also, just Raven Frost would be great. Spirit Shroud would be nice because we still get plus one to all skills. Though I would lose my level 15 Valk, which would kind of suck. Bender, what's going on, brother? How you doing? We are doing a elemental boson through hell. What are you up to today? Hardcore? I mean, honestly, I'd recommend Smiter. Now, I would say Hammerden would still be the better there, but I think I think Smiter. I did a hardcore Smiter playthrough, and it was crushingly easy, like. Because you just stun everything with it. My mic's a bit low again. Ah! I have, like, no way to fix it. So dude, it's so annoying. Tried help Paladin, wasn't amused. <laughs> Sounds good, bro. You excited for Saturday? I am not amused with this little dude. I know, it's just been... What's going on Saturday? Big race! Eight man, or eight people racing. Should be a lot of fun. Join my army. <laughs> Me too. Hold up. Wait a minute, title says Hell Bowazon, and you said Elemental Bowazon. Did you advertise something and played something else? What? It's you Elemental. Can't do that. It's Ill Eagle. The Hell Bowazon in. or the Elemental Bowazon in Hell. So nasty here. This has been probably the most painful area we've had to be in so far, I would say. Go 
good Moiris. Flares are just super annoying. We got a bad spawn of them as well. Nothing great there. We got a bad spawn. Too many cold immunes. So, it's all right. We can uh, run forward. And go for the avoid everybody strategy. Or fight. What do we want to fight? But yeah, just a lot of these cold immunes. And again, we can take it slow. So if you want to go slower in here, do not feel like you cannot. I am just going to pick up the pace slightly through this area for myself. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Because, you know, we can. But again, this comes down to how how well you feel about your skills of dodging monsters and all of this. And it's very difficult to teleport, and the problem is if you do die, it's going to put you in a, in a difficult position. So, that's one of the hard parts about it, is... Really don't want to uh, die there, because then you're going to be in a tricky spot. But, we're able to get the waypoint, and then come back here. If it was only like cold immunes or fire immunes or something out there, it'd be better. But the combination and them constantly running around. It's a lot of annoyance. Uh oh. Another dual immune. And, uh, yeah, the physical immune part isn't bad, it's the cold immune. Kill the other guys with him. And then if we wanted to, we could take him out, but I don't know if we need to. Again, kind of up to you. Pick how you want to fight. Ooh, so many of them immune to cold. First hardcore traps and died here. It can be nasty in here for sure. Not enough mana. I need mana. Hopefully not too bad for this guy. Check for 320s. So close. And there we go. Now we got the brain. I mean, dolls are pretty scary. 26 defense. We don't really need defense, so we don't care about that. And we can continue forward. And avoid all the cold immunes. Now, we could also, if you did want to kill more stuff out here in this area, you could just reset the map until you don't get cold immunes. Because you don't have to always spawn cold immunes. That's not always the case. I think it's on players 1, but I'll just set it back to P1 anyways. So remember, you always have that option. PNG Bala, thank you very much for the prime. I do appreciate that. Now, before we touch these chests, and that one is locked, we can switch to player 7. 
So we can literally just do it right then. Pop the chest. Pop the chest. Go back to players one if we want. Or we could keep it at player seven for all of the poppables because again, everything out here that you pop can drop some nice things, honestly. Amethyst. Player seven. Player seven and players eight are the same for dropping. Another chipped amethyst, perfect. If we find a uh, am rune, then that'll work well for us. Yeah, this is a play along for YouTube. And again, this is one of those areas, like I've said before, where you can run it as many times as you would like. And we actually have a really solid setup there for camps. So this is one of those where I'm actually going to do a little bit here. So let me go and come over here really fast. Have a couple things, but we'll have some fun with it for sure. Another level up. I'm actually going to go into strength because I do want to get back to that 60 strength. And now you can see I'm done with cold arrow. So now I'm going to start putting into fire arrow to get more damage on our exploding arrow for later. Pop that. Pop this. Flawless diamonds. I mean, just all sorts of stuff around here. Skeleton, flawless skull. Get some keys. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun with it. Just gonna pop a couple more things. Go get a waypoint, and then we'll come back and do a couple LKs. See if this is the exit or not over here. It is okay. Perfect. Some cold immunes. We'll avoid those for right now. And let's see if we can find ourselves the waypoint. And then Battle Maid Serena may be a little difficult, but again, we can just come back. So, like I said, since we have, uh, you know, this really nice map, and you can also save quit over and over to get that really nice map if you would like. Moo? Thanks for the stream. Oh, for sure, Mix. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the Golden Bird later. And this can go here. And let's grab. Toss that out. Oops. Put the bird there for now. But we can come to the LK and just go player seven. And again, player seven and players eight are the exact same in terms of drops. And we can just run around and pop these bad boys. And just pop these chests. See what we can get. We can also, if we want, try and kill this guy. That well, might be a little tough, but... That would be a lot of experience, I do imagine. Each one of these that we kill. Let's see it. Watch that experience bar. Nice. Not bad at all. It's like four 
percent per bar. It's locked. Yeah, nothing there. Yeah, we haven't done the council, so they're not gonna run away yet. But come over here, pop some chests. And rinse and repeat. And again, you can you can kind of kill or, or I mean pop do as much of this as you would like. You can run around and pop the entire LK if you would like. Um, you can just do it for you know just that area, nowhere else. Always good to snack those keys. And just pop some random bodies and whatever stuff we find. And you can find runes and jewels and charms and all sorts of goodies in here. I mean, really a lot of stuff drops from these now you're not gonna find any uniques or sets you you can find rares though you can get nice like rare amulets and rings and that stuff gloves whatever but we'll be limited to that so and then if you're looking for more just kind of general stuff you can pop all those things pop just random corpses and whatever stuff and those can also drop, you know, runes and that stuff. But these super chests are the ones as well that are that have the ability to drop, like, uh, you know, burr rune, sir rune, that stuff. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing this. I just want to show it and maybe we'll get something. There's a tier rune. Not quite what we wanted. But lots of gems already. Oops, wrong one. Popping logs and skellies and all sorts of stuff because again, finding an am rune, finding a soul rune, finding a shale rune, any one of those would get me to another breakpoint, which would be really nice. So maybe we'll get it. Let's see. I think it just turned off right now. I can't. Impossible. Off this corpse. And that chest. All right. Not this time. We won't. We won't take a bunch of time to do it. It's not crazy important, but it's just something to think about. Also, extremely easy gold. This is a fabulous place if you need to get some gold. Fantastic place to go. So nope. we'll go back hey, to Lama, players one. Just watched your Zod rune find. That was awesome. Thank you. And... I was very happy to, to have found it. We'll go to the Cross Bazaar and continue forward. Mavspo, that would be cool. Yeah, I'm just wearing a big old life belt. 99 to life. Simple, easy to buy. My bow is just two shells in a plus three. Looking for a third shale. Impossible. I can. Impossible. No. Thanks, long fingers. Appreciate that. I mean, that's what it is, Rack. Now I'll we'll run around the sewers. The trick to find level two is you want to run 
generally clockwise. If you find the chest, then you need to turn around, essentially. But you can use the chest as a little bit of a guidance. Because it'll be right of the chest. If you know directions. Right of the chest tile, I should say. Oh god. Oh, there's terrible frames. <laughs> And we're out. Perfectly fine. No issues. Now again, Act 3 is still just annoying. Just an annoying place to be. But. It's okay. Slow and steady. Maybe we'll find ourselves in Amarin somewhere here soon. Or a Sol run. Or a Shell run. We are still on P1, yes. And we do have Travancle coming up. And Travancle is definitely no joke. Another extremely difficult part of the game. Make sure you grab this waypoint for some safety first. And then if you want to reset it, like that's a lot of stuff that's kind of out there. I don't really want to deal with all that stuff right now. You can totally reset the game, come back in, get yourself in a more, you know, just kind of set position to deal with it all. Also, put a couple of rejuves. And see what we get out here. So, I would definitely say clearing out the space to the Travancle is pretty important. Um, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of room to move around. Is it worth to stack skill points and find potion on a MF bar? Yeah, because now it gives benefit to find items, so. So good. You can take your time here. Oh, that's annoying. We're gonna heal each other. Hopefully uh, I can knock him out, and then we'll knock him out. And then we'll deal with him. Okay. Now we can fight Devil King. So like I say, just nice and simple. Yeah, probably around like level 13 or 14 is when fine potion starts to become better. We're just clearing them out one mob at a time here because you don't want to have to deal with all of these mobs at once. It's just not going to be a good time for you, I promise. As for Travancol, Torque is not going to be the one we want to kill. And they are going to murder your Zon quickly, but we can grab Gelub right here and drag him far away. And this is also why having uh, Ishmael came as well. This is also why having a kind of that space a little bit is really nice. So we have room to drag them here. Don't heal, don't heal. Nice. Perfect. Go ahead and do that. 
do this, try and distract him, and we can work our way over. Perfect. Now, if you want to slow that down, you can peel them away one by one, kill them, peel the next one away, kill the next one, and continue to do so. That is 100% a viable way to fight them. Um, I, I, would, I would recommend that for a majority of you guys as just a way to, to not have to worry as much. If you feel comfortable going in and fighting like that, then, you know, do that. But really, that kind of comes down to what your comfort level is. How you're feeling with it all. So now we're just going to continue forward. I mean, I'm level 67. Which is a great level to be. I feel very perfectly fine leveled. I could still level more if I wanted. Getting up to level, you know, 71, 72 would be fine. I mean, every additional point is going to be an additional point that gets to be put into Exploding Arrow's damage. Thanks to Fire Arrow. So it's not bad at all. You know, just makes it even easier for synergies. But we're definitely at a point where this character should be able to go on and uh, beat the game and have decent damage to do it you know I mean in decent right I mean for what she is always have to remember <laughs> when's reset I don't know hopefully soon so if you want you can get the waypoint down here if you want to farm Hel Mephisto I would say Hel Mephisto is going to be a tough one to farm I think he's going to be He's just going to take a long time to kill on the Boazon. Um, I think Indario is going to be a lot faster. Now, you do get a better grouping of, you know, stuff if you kill Mephisto, right? He just has better item drops overall for you. But wouldn't be my uh, number one recommendation, really. I think it's just going to take a lot of time and be a little tedious for you. So if you find the waypoint, you can do that. If you don't, you can continue forward. Really just depends how much time you want to put in and grind on it. Because again, not everybody watching this is trying to speed run through the game and rush through and beat everything as fast as possible, right? I mean, plenty of you guys are A, just trying to get through the game for, you know, fun purposes there. Um, or just to beat the game for the first time or whatever it is, or with the bows on for the first time. So something that's really fun about Diablo 2 is taking your time and grinding up cool gear and stuff. Doing those, you know, Mephisto and Dario runs, doing the LK runs, doing all that stuff. And then when you find that really cool piece of gear, you find that rune you need or whatever, it's really exciting. And then you can instantly feel your character gain that value, right? And instantly your character just becomes a stronger character. So here's our waypoint, and we might just have the uh, level three right there, which would be Actually, super nice. Yep. So this would be an amazing map if I wanted to farm. Impossible. My brothers have escaped you. Alright, let's go over here. Let's uh, swap this. Let's kill Wyand. For sure, Bomb. Magic resistance really lowers our damage. Okay, move. 
I hope someone goes back through the playthrough and does a mana potion counter for this. It would be high. So again, we can get down here. I heard about this guy called Mr. Llama SC who speedruns D2 and attempts world records. Do you know him? And when can we get him on stream? Ooh. Mr. Llama Mod check M R L L A M A B Mr. Llama Mod check M R L L A M A B <coughs> Mr. Llama Mod check M R L L A M A B. Thank you very much, Akama. Thank you, Johan and Beaten Zone. Yeah, I'm sure he'll uh, make a make an appearance here. Let's stream again. Well, like I say, is this hard? No. Is this taking, you know, 5,000 years? No, it's not bad. You could definitely come back here and do, you know, four, five, six uh, Mephistos, you know, 10 Mephisto, 20 Mephisto runs, whatever you want. And then again, you can have a Tarn Helm in waiting or a four open socket, perfect topaz armor in waiting with magic find. Put it on, you're good to go, right? So, really not too bad at all, and a great way to farm up some cool gear, and maybe get yourself a Shaco or something awesome, you know? Hey, Heavy Belt, that actually is awesome for us. There you go. We got ourselves a gold wrap. Fifty-one percent, gross. But now we get ten per ten more IAS, which doesn't actually help our current spot, as that only brings us up to fifty, and I need fifty-six. But if I went back to my other bow, it would actually push me to the next breakpoint, I believe. However, the damage would go down, right? 1414, whereas this bow is 1564, but Just found now I shoot two frames faster. Looks like perfect for a frost maiden. So, you know. Oh, that's a good one. Very nice rag. So, you know, you can you can argue both uh, both sides, both styles. But this also has 30 MF. And again, now I could go back and I could farm Mephisto again. And now I have a little more magic find. And I can just keep doing this. Nice and easy. So let's head out. We also, of course, have Isual to kill for two more skill points. That'll be very nice for our damage. So let's go find him. Impossible. Now, Act 4 is a difficult act, just overall in general. So be warned. And you definitely want to have some fire res out here. Oof, look at that conviction aura. I'm in your top three spot on Twitch. What do you mean your top three spot? Is there a, a favorites now on Twitch? I feel like I remember them mentioning pinned channels. That's what it was, yeah. I didn't know that that actually came to be. Two to max damage, that doesn't do anything for us really. I wasn't sure if that actually existed now and was a real thing. This is gonna be a little spicy out here. Doesn't really do anything. I mean, you can pin your favorite streamers to the top of the following list. I think that does something.
But if you follow 10, yeah, but I mean, I have like hundreds of follows. I can't. So it would be very nice to actually pin. Because, you know, there's people you follow because they're friends of yours, things like that. But then also you don't really watch their stream very much. And I can't. All right. Spawner. Dang it. Another flesh spawner over here. I just want to keep have as few minions here, mobs here as possible so when we fight. It's not too bad. There we go. Perfect. Do I still play chess a little bit here and there? Valk has so much health? Yeah, Valks are just tanks, man. Good job, Valky. Two more skill points. One, two. We don't have thorns anymore. Also, thorns at this point is going to be pretty useless. I can't. Okay. Impossible. And let's go to the river. Or the city, I guess. <laughs> How you doing, said Nick? Good to see ya. Nice. We love it when it's right there. Be very difficult to kill, honestly. We could try it for fun, but I imagine it's gonna be extremely hard. But we'll see how many mobs are there and stuff. We can obviously respawn him if we need to, which can be helpful. Let's actually reset. See if we can get. Uh, I have the level 15 Valk, I know, but. I want to see if we can spawn better mobs out here. There we go, we got a level 15 Valk there as well. Perfect. Honestly, great mobs. Very happy with it. I can't. Hmm. Feels like it's just gonna take us in a circle or something. Will it cut down? No, it goes to the dead end. Okay. Oh, there we go. Just on the up. 
Oh yeah, you're right. I do have thorns from my edge bow. I forgot I swapped back to the edge for the speed. He's cold fire enchanted. Actually, still working. change anything. Even with a cold fire immune, we can still kill him. Lovely. I'm just shooting him hoping to proc my level 15 bout. That's the only reason I'm shooting, by the way. Which I just procced and then I left it. Darn it. I accidentally summoned over it. Go, baby. What do you think it is, chat? What rune? It is Co Rune Melody. So now we have to figure out how to get a three open socket. Also, I did just get rid of the shale rune, which would have been used for Melody as well. So, some difficulties. <laughs> All good though. We'll we'll keep our eyes out for a bow and uh, see what we can do. This is one of those. If I was playing solo and chilling, I would a thousand percent go and farm and get that bow and all that. Since I'm on here. You know, we're, we're good enough. We're doing okay where we is. We'll see what we find along the way, you know. Aw, oh, that's a nice box. for the Chaos Sanctuary. 
for Oblivion Knights are going to be awful. Well, the thing is, I don't want a four open socket bow, I want a three open socket bow. It's going to be tough. Lots of good things in guided playthroughs before. Harmony is okay, but I would like melody. I got to choose. Plus three to bow and crossbow skills on top of whatever plus, you know, X that we'll have from the bow would be lovely. You can make insight in a bow, but again, insight has no IAS and it has no plus skills, so it's not really doing a lot for me. 12, 10 barb, ouch. Okay. Yeah, it'd be much more for a physical boson. So we can teleport through if we want to just get through more of this area. Obviously more dangerous though to do so. But it gets us inside. Now, hopefully you don't have cold fire immune spawn. If you do, and it's just proving to be too difficult, Ooh. you can just reset. Thanks, Novi. You can reset your chaos. Or, if you want to fight them, you can fight them as well. Really kind of up to you, however you're feeling. Go to exclamation mark guides. I've got guides for like 41 characters or something that I've written up on Icy Veins. Those are all my recommendations. got cooked in that corner. It was close. And the nice thing is you can abuse the AI here and really kind of long range. My mercenary or my Valkyrie might actually end up kind of making it tough for us. But now that she's dead, we can really uh, launch from afar here for these kills. I need mana. For sure, Mike. Not enough mana. Okay. Need some dudes. The reason I'm doing Infector first is just in case he's cold and fire immune. I want to see, you know, if we can kill him with it or not. I mean, we were able to kill the other cold fire immunes, so, you know, there is potential, but. It's 
And since we freeze them, they're not going to be able to run away, so... Puts us in a perfect spot. And he is cold fire immune. So we'll have to test it out and see how he does. We'll have to see how he does. He's also cursed, which kind of sucks for us. Ooh, Myrmidon Greaves. Maybe this edge bow is helping a little bit here. Like I say, if you if you end up not being able to kill him here, you can just reset the Chaos Sanctuary. He won't always be cold and fire immune. He'll always be fire, but not always both. And same with Desace. So the two of those are really annoying. But it looks like our uh, Thorns is actually helping a lot here. Also another point. I'm not sure I'd be able to drop his resistances into getting hurt range, even with low res. Potentially we could have. Six to mana, eh, not worth enough. But, there we go. Easy as that. First boss is dead. Let's move on to boss number two. And again, having some fire res here makes all the difference. This is, you really are gonna wanna focus on getting things to boost your resistances if you can. Fifteen Valkyrie. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if they cast lower res on you, good luck, but. Again, being able to freeze everything is really going to be a huge benefit for us as it's going to help us keep that Valk alive. And he is cold fire immune, so we are good there. And we can actually hit him with lower resistance as well. Really increase that fire damage, even though he is fire enchanted. Yeah, I know, Thomas, but these ones give plus two attack rating, so. Perfect. Two down, one to go. Sometimes I like to run forward just to kind of see what sort of map I'm going to run in, be running into. See how many mobs are over there. This one looks kind of busy. We'll try and 
take care of it. Clean up a little space. Something that's really important, especially when you're in like the Chaos Sanctuary, is getting yourself essentially a safe corner. A safe place where you can always come back to it. If you die, you can have a TP there, whatever it is, and nothing is going to kill you there. And then you can fight out from that spot and just fight like one monster at a time if you need to, right? So that's kind of... Hmm, all res 8, but half for restoration is kind of nice. That's okay. So here, I've got this little section kind of, you know, locked off to myself. And I can just fight one mob at a time if I need. I am Obviously, it's going to be kind of annoying because there's a lot of those guys, but that's okay. Go ahead and get this spawn out here. Get our final boss here. Perfect. He's not immune. We'll just kind of drop some shots in on him. Uh, no code. It's it's only if you have it on your character. And there you go. I mean, pretty, pretty simple. Let's get our lower resist wand over again. And we can start laying into El Diablo. I think we're gonna play D4. We don't have any information about it yet. much to learn. I haven't even seen the leaks. I don't even know where these leaks are. The only leak I heard was smart leak, which I do hate. I'm moving around, lower resisting, but honestly, our ice arrow will take care of Diablo in no time whatsoever. Rain of terror has ended. And how simple was that chat? I can't. That was pretty easy, huh? What do you need? Got ourselves a uh, Silks of the Victor. Used to be such a good item back in the day. Join my army of the dead. Llama as the jelly roll and S tier necro skill. Oh. Jelly roll? <laughs> jelly roll. We'll just get a little bit of money since we're running a little short. Finchy K with five gifted subs and a big ol' clap for everybody. You have just beaten act four of hell and that was easy that was an absolute breeze wasn't it you didn't even you didn't even realize how easy that was gonna be thanks sub Let's get some more arrows. And let's move our way into Act Numero Cinco. Ah, as they say in France. Nearly a year. Nearly a year. Thank you very much. Ditch Boy with the tier two. They say no pay to win, but paying for a head start is absolutely pay to win. What do you mean paying for a head start? Where's that leak? I 
Nobody knows what language it is. Now, Bloody Foothills is actually an extremely difficult area. This is one of the hardest areas in the game. Just because you get the quill rats and the burning archers and the slingers, there's so many projectiles flying everywhere. The mobs are grouped up all over the place. A full weak head start? What does that even mean? What is a week? Early access, that's different. Oh, they're saying if you pre-order, then they'll let you start playing the, the season seven days or before. Okay, so that's just for the first ladder for season, which is kind of dumb. Well, we knew they were going to limit trading. Ah, okay, right, Toast. But yeah, you just got to be very careful out here. It's It can just get really dangerous. It was just a survey. They asked, would you pay for that, I guess? Okay. Yeah, that's probably them just trying to feel out if it's something that people would actually pay for and is worth doing or not, you know? Now you can, of course, slow move yourself through these areas as well, per usual. Move. It's always an option. Thanks, McBain. The fact that they would even ask, I mean, I, I don't like it. Does seem pretty scummy. All right, let's take this out. Honestly, wouldn't be a bad place to drop a uh, lower resist either. I would not hate a low rune. Would not hate it one bit. See, micro. One to curses, not quite. And remember, killing, uh, finishing the first quest right here is going to decrease the cost of potions. So potions used to cost, they cost double when you first get to Act 5. It's 2,000 mana and 1,000 or gold. I would never ever pay money for, for a microtransaction. Also here is 100 bits. Aw, thanks, Diablo. <laughs> so, that is something to note, is going and doing that first quest before you buy potions there can save you some gold. Okay, let's get our telly staff. And let's move our way through. Now, of course, if you want to come out and farm and kill more stuff, you totally can. Uh, don't let me stop you from farming, having a good time with that. Yeah, I, I don't know if saying Immortal has been a big success 
So it proves that that's, you know, a really good, like, game and stuff, uh, is anything. More so that, uh, yeah, they found ways to exploit people's gambling and, you know, psychological mindset. Um, I think that's an easier way to put it. As most mobile games aim to do. They're, they're very specifically designed to uh, take advantage of you and put you in that spot where you feel close to, you know, winning if you just had a little more or whatever it was. stuff. How many platinum do I have in D4? What does that mean? It's a platinum. Can iPhone 8 run Diablo Immortal? Not worth downloading in my opinion, really. in-game currency what how do you guys have all this information about Diablo 4 and I have none of it what leaks are you guys Warren can you send me all these leaks <laughs> I want to see this stuff Now, it is going to be very nasty in here, uh, just as a heads up. Snakes, and there's going to be a lot of cold immunes, a lot of snakes, a lot of things with high cold res, all sorts of stuff. It is not going to be a fun time. Sorry we signed an NDA. <laughs> See how it feels. Crazy. All the cool kids break NDAs? Well, I don't have any cool information. Y'all know more about D4 than I have any even slight knowledge about. Oh god, Death Lords. Okay, I just want the waypoints. And then I'll move forward. Scapella, thank you! Oh, don't touch me. Yeah, now again, we can go through these areas very, very slowly. Fight one monster at a time, and honestly, do okay with it. You can also just run a little bit further ahead and not fight everything. But if you want, you know, like I say, I mean, we have the damage to fight these guys. And it'll just take a little bit of time. And that just kind of comes down to what's your appetite for danger, softcore, hardcore. Do you feel comfortable running forward? All of that. I mean, you guys keep saying jelly roll, and I just want donuts now. And again, if we were stopping and killing lots of stuff, we could also be leveling plenty right now. Alright. 
So, let's go ahead and slow it down a tiny bit here. Lancers are actually extremely deadly, and they can catch you in pretty bad spots. So, I don't mind stopping and kind of killing them as we move along. We'll see what other mobs we have in here, but... For the Lancers, I uh, want to do a little bit of work there. And kill some spike teams. Go over again. Timurus with the order's help. The problem is he'll, he'll just die way too fast. Uh-oh. I don't like cursed. Okay, we'll grab the waypoint. Give us a little safety. ourselves back a little bit here. There we go. <laughs> Pike ladies are strong, man. Thankfully, we're also decently strong. We can handle them. Oh boy. Oh god, not this grouping. That's death. <laughs> oh, sometimes you teleport into might and chance, and it's not as fun. Perfect. Let us uh, go back, and this is why we get waypoints. Nothing exactly over there. We've got carvers. Now, if I was moving through the Ancients' Way one monster at a time, that would have been a breeze. Because honestly, I would have slow approached there, drawn out the one mob that was doing damage, you know, the might or like, it would be easy. It's just the fact that we tried to teleport through all of it that actually made it difficult. So you really shouldn't feel too, you know, in a difficult position or anything with that. Now, we are going to uh, do this. Let me go ahead and trash some of these rings and things that I have. I like that one. Trash all that. And we'll put those away. At your service. Repair. And now we'll just get some potions. So going into Hell Ancients, we're going to want an okay amount of potions. Let's actually keep it like this for now. Right. And mana is going to be our main focus. So we actually will want to put the mana potions and health potions into the cube. Impossible. That's fine. And so we can store some like this. We can come over here and we can drop potions like this. Put them all over the ground if we want. Just so we have more potions for when we're fighting later, right? This is just going to be a nice, easy way to do it so that you don't run out of pots halfway through and go, No, I was, you know, so close or whatever. So again, you can come out and if you if you think, Oh, I might want more potions, then put more potions down. I mean, honestly, they're just potions. It's just gold. Nobody really cares, right? So, you know, you can watch and see how many pots it takes me if you'd like and then go from there. I'm just going to put those two stacks down. 
and then go from here. So, let's go to fight. The main thing is I have my lower resist wand with good charges on it still. 67 out of 67. I've got my tele. And so now I'm just looking to make sure I don't have any cold fire immunes. If I have cold fire immunes, I'm going to drop a town portal and reset it again. That looks fine, that looks fine. And he's cold fire immune, so we will do that again. And that looks okay. Except he is kind of fast. I didn't like his speed, honestly. So you're not only just looking for cold, no cold fire immune, but you're also looking at what are the mods, right? Are they going to have awful mods? Lightning enchant isn't going to be very fun. It's going to do a lot of damage to my Valk over and over again very quickly, and that's just going to be annoying. At the same time, um, you know, it could be really annoying to do uh, other things. Now, something we could actually do... Oh, that's dirty. Okay, something we can actually do is... I'll, I'll teach you guys this trick. Whenever Korlik is jumping, wherever he's going to land becomes a, a, a spot that gets essentially locked in the game. So if we go over here and Korlik tries to jump on us. And I set that TP, then that becomes a locked spot that nobody can run over. And god, the frames for this are so bad. Okay, so he's tried to leap on us there. So we'll come one more time around like this. I need him to try and leap on me over here. Oops, that was weird. I definitely right clicked. I don't know why it left clicked it. That was strange. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I right-clicked it. Like, I promise you I, I right-clicked that. That was so weird. Okay. Well, let's run back. Okay. And perfect, we're there. Anti cheese system, exactly. Okay, so it's kind of buggy, but we can still kind of go through there. Set a TP. Just want to show you guys this fun little trick. Okay. Here. It is getting really glitchy in there. Is the high rune seed stuff going to break the game's economy? Not quite ready yet. No, because that's for single player only. Perfect. So now you can see, like I like I had said, yeah, it would for sure, Bender. You can no longer run through this area. This area is completely locked out because of just how this game functions in this weird way where it locks the space on the ground. So if I want now, I can get all of these guys to come over and stand back behind this spot. No. Again, no cold fire immunes. Sheesh. Lightning enchanted, mana burn, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, cowboy. We can just come over here. And now they'll all gather. Oh my god, there actually was a spot through that they found. Interesting. Or maybe not. I might just have to be far enough away. We'll try one more time. 
Yeah, I was too close to them. Never mind, it was still good. Okay, cold fire immune. We say no thank you. Perfect. That'll work. Holy phrase is really annoying, but that's okay. Oh, I need to get him on the other side. Come here, Talek. So we can get all three of them, and we can just lock them over there. Why is it not weapon swapping? It's being very strange. My keys are being weird right now. I don't like it. Cold fire immune. All right, let's just stick on our telly staff. So make it easier. Cool. So now they will all hang out and just stand right here. And this is like the ultimate glitch for any of that stuff. As, yeah, they'll literally just stand here. So, you're essentially moat tricking the ancients. Pretty much. And then just swap over every time the resistance come back and you can just kill them off. Now, if you do want to fight them straight up, you totally can. And before I kill them, I'll actually show a little bit of that. I don't mind uh, doing some damage here, though, to them just for fun. Oh, wow, we have teleport, actually. Perfect. So what you can actually do is separate them off, right? So you're only fighting one at a time. This is, this is the strategy I, I would suggest. Just fight them one at a time. You just get your Valkyrie in front, and you're just going to kill this one. And then you'll go over, and you'll drag the next one away. You know, so maybe we, uh, yeah, she'll, she'll get one of them to come over there. Perfect. And now they chase here, and perfect. And now we have this one separated off. And you can use your telly staff for separating them. Can be the easiest thing to do. And obviously, Korlik is going to take a while, as our exploding arrow is less, uh, less damage but this is why we have all these potions and all this and again if I can get a level 15 Valkyrie to spawn I'll be very happy so hopefully we get one soon but he has stone skin so I'm not gonna hit him very often at all but essentially, they only... Oh no, I don't have enough arrows. I forgot the one thing I needed. More arrows. That's okay. We can go set them up over there and we'll be fine. Um, so, these potions will despawn though. So it's actually important to go ahead... I forgot that it was an arrow character. And pick up all these potions. And just... Pick them up and drop them again, and it resets their timer, and then they'll be totally good. They found my one weakness, ammo. Okay. So I can actually go ahead and grab a couple more um, arrows as well if I want, right? Can I help you? can just have two stacks of that. And I can even throw some stacks down on the ground. So then it's like, perfect. Now I've got, you know, arrow stacks here as well. Really all that you want right there. But um, being able to kind of break away and have that space, though, from them. And this is also where the teleport staff really comes in handy. 
Um, being able to telly away is a great way to separate them off. So I'll kind of go show how I go about doing that. All right, so normally you're going to be going, if one's like extra fast, that can be really helpful. But this would be like a, a decent spot. I don't know if I got one separated. Okay, and so for instance, I would go like this, and then I would have just Maddox come to me. Now the reason they're not is because they're stuck in our little cheese spot. But, uh... That would be a way to separate them off and just have the one come for you. No, we ran out of arrows. <laughs> I forgot I should set more arrows. But it's okay, like I said. I mean, this is... It's good almost to show, oh, okay, we can just get another spawn and it'll be okay and it's fine. And again, this cheese spot that I showed here before, I think is really good to show because this is very helpful. So you can just build it up by making sure Korlik is trying to leap onto you in these positions and then you'll be in a great spot. It's good, Evo. You free to chat? Okay. And he'll come over. And he is cursed, which is kind of annoying. So we can actually swap this. Can you confirm the Diablo 4 rune word that grants plus one to Jelly Roll? Sure. Whatever that means. And cool, we spawned a level 15 Valkyrie over there as well for a little added damage. Ouch, yeah. Got to use immolation arrow here. We don't have immolation arrow. I mean, if we maxed immolation, it would be okay. I still like exploding more. Blizzard doesn't care what you do in single player. Moo. Lucky 13, eh? I need mana. I need mana. I need mana. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Poutine. And you can also see, the second I spawned a single level 15 Valkyrie, she hasn't died once. And so, she can honestly take Korlik on her own if I really wanted. I could go away for 10 minutes and she would kill. But obviously, you know, we might as well add our own fire damage. How do I do this without this trick? The same idea. You're just teleporting away, so you're only fighting one at a time. You're just fighting Matic. You're just fighting Korlik. You're just fighting Talik, whatever it is. And you just want to fight an individual. And once you do that, you're going to be fine. Those points in strength. And another point in magic arrow. We'll swap this over. Oh, the jelly roll. Yeah, I forgot about that terrible looking skill. The blood wave or whatever it is. I'm using an elemental boson. And this is a great example of, you know, if you want to slow push. Right. 
We can definitely slow push our way through here. There's death lords. It's scary. No reason to uh, go crazy. So, this character can take its time. It has the ability to, to crush everything here. I think my pierce is 65%. Maybe it's actually a little less because... Yeah, it's probably less. I don't think I have a lot of points in it, actually. Yeah, it's only down at 42%. And that is something I do not really want to fight. But, thankfully we can stand back some in long range. Get some shots in this way. Because you have to remember, there's kind of a chain that bosses have with their minions. And so you can abuse that chain. Uh-oh. The Valkyrie dragged the boss in. That's not good. Oh, I don't have my uh, rejuves on either. God, he is so strong. Perfect. And that's gonna be like one of the hardest bosses that you'll fight. <laughs> so, uh... Not in town. You know, being able to, to beat them is, is pretty, pretty nice. All right, let's keep going. This is definitely not a great spawn. Oh my gosh, now with that. The holy freeze. We're gonna try this way and see how it goes. It is just bad meets worse everywhere we turn down here. Okay, so I, this guy's called Fire Moon. I do not want to fight him. I am going to use my teleporting to get away. And of course we immediately run into another pack and this one has Might Aura. Fabulous. And cold enchanted. All right, let's see where this takes us. Nowhere. Okay. This is one of those times when it's such a terrible spawn. Honestly, just resetting is not a bad idea. Like that's just such a horrible spawn. So many boss groups, and they're all Death Lord groups. Cold damage and holy freeze, and all sorts of stuff. So, we're gonna try and sneak around. Nah. We're just gonna reset it. <laughs> we're just gonna reset it and call it good. We also guessed the wrong way every single time. So, unfortunate, what you gonna do? Yeah, that was just nasty. Like I say, sometimes you just say, okay, game. Okay, you win this round. We'll just, we'll come back. We are level 69. And two thirds. Yeah, it's a pretty decent level. Okay, let's see what we got this time. 
Hopefully not Death Lords. All right, we have Ghoul Lords. Much preferred. And some Harpies. Still gonna be annoying, obviously, with cannot be frozen or being frozen as well. But nothing we can't handle. Whoa! Wow, that curse hit. I did not expect that. Oh boy. Alright, well now, I, I just did not expect that hit at all, man. Uh -oh. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to get by those. Uh, Alright, that's fine. We now know where we need to go, so it's not a big deal. Like, this next time through will be uh, pretty easy. And do a fast tally over. Obviously, like I say, if we full clear it and go slow, that works. Ooh, assailants. But let's go down to level two. And we can go repair as well. Can I help you? Now, let's say you don't have the gold to repair, but you need to repair your telly staff. You can always do a chipped gem and an ort rune. I actually want my chipped gems because I need them in case I find something. Um, but an ort rune and a chipped gem in your cube, and that will do a full repair. So, just as a heads up. That'll repair all the charges. Alright, let's pray for no Gloams. And we're gonna grab the waypoint, and of course there's Gloams. We're gonna grab the waypoint here. Just to help ourselves out. No, Ort Rune will repair the weapon, but not add charges. If you want the charges as well, then you need to have the chip gem in there. Hey, Llama, how do you repair charges on an amulet? Uh, just go to repair. I don't think you can do it in your queue. So if you just go to the repair shop, you should be able to do it there. Now, one thing that you'll see me doing is just kind of really trying to stay away and fighting like one at a time, two at a time. That's it. I can. Right? I'm, I'm not trying to go in and engage 10 Gloams at once. Great way to just die instantly. Oh, yeah, I found a lot of them. My legs are good. Alright, so we get a Gloam. Just one. One fight. We move on to the next Gloam. We fight the next one. Two decks. You don't need decks for your elemental hits to hit. So I'm just slow and steady because I just want to get this waypoint. And we'll see if this is it or if this is the exit. Perfect. Alright, so we got the waypoint. Nice and simple. can just go forward. Yeah, 
Get him. I mean, attack rating is very difficult in this game. Okay, we got more gloms down there. We can go back here. And, uh... I guess we have enough arrows, we're fine. Afternoon. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice there. We're just gonna long range some gloams, because again, we're just moving slowly through it right now. And there's level three, perfect. Gold wrap and rock stopper, yep. Now we have level three. careful with these harpies, they can end up actually doing a lot of damage. There's a lot of stuff up there. And over there. See if we can sneak away to the throne somehow. Juicy, spicy map. This is not good. Whew. Help me, All right. Mr. Llama. I just watched your seated rune farming YouTube video. If now, I am playing on a fixed map in SPD2R, mm -hmm. are my LK super chests truly random, or am I going to be going to getting items between fixed parameters on that specific map seed? Um, no, you'll be fine as long as you don't have the seed set. If you have the seed set, then it'll be a problem. Okay, now we have Gloams down here as well. See what else we get. But we could have totally walked through level 3. It probably would have taken us 10-15 minutes to walk through that whole level 3 though. It was very nasty. We probably would have gained an entire level doing so. Death Lords are not my favorite for uh, Throne of Destruction. Gloams are honestly not too bad right now because we do have enough lightning resistances. We've been able to handle them, and dolls are obviously never anybody's favorite. So we just need to be careful. Just need to make sure we're not dragging too many things at once to have to fight. But otherwise, uh should be alright here. Just a couple death lords at a time. There's a minion right there, so we do want to be careful. Snot Vex is cold and fire immune, so we actually really want to be careful about him. Oh, there he is. Perfect. Okay, so we'll get Snot Vex all the way down here. And now we're gonna teleport back up. So that drags Snot Vex and a majority of his minions away. There's actually another cold fire immune right here in Mooncrawler. So we're gonna do the same thing and reverse it. It's very unfortunate that we drew two Death Lord boss groups that were cold fire immune. But what's she gonna do? gonna teleport up into here for now and then we can come back out and fight those guys later oops 
Got rid of my level 15. Kill off some dolls. Get some potions. some points into energy as well to help and I've kept a little bit of stuff with plus to mana and things like this ring 54 to mana I right, gosh dang it I keep accidentally overriding him so I want to come out here and clear this out a little bit just because I don't want to have to deal with these death lords coming up behind me when I'm unaware. And now that we got that, just move forward. And kill uh, all these guys. Another point in fire, fire arrow, more vitality. And I can also draw these guys away here. So obviously the respawn is not going to be very fun. But we can actually drag these away. There's a lot of dolls in there that are not going to be fun to deal with. Instead, we'll drag them out down here and kill them just away from the Unravelers so we don't have to deal with that. Wand on for these I guys keep forgetting. Can. What level was it for the best chance to get SOJ? Best chance to get it when gambling? Just finding it, it's not going to matter. For gambling, it was like 40... What was it? 45? Something like that. Uh, wave 2 will be a little slow because of this. I think it's 45. But again, this is just going to help you out a lot rather than... ...having to uh, deal with the constant respawning. Okay, try and pop those dolls down here. And again, try and run them out. And you can see, uh, once again, this is why we did build that space in for ourselves, right? Give ourselves some room to run backwards and not get attacked by Death Lords. Very important piece. Yeah, you can run more points and dodge and evade and avoid and stuff for uh, for this build. Definitely not a bad idea if you want a little more tankiness. That's where a lot of the just extra plus to skills also really comes into play and can be super helpful. So now the important thing is we get up here and we fight these guys and we just keep them away from where they're going to be resummoning stuff. As the main piece. So 
don't let them run too far down to chase after you. Otherwise, they'll be really annoying. Steady, but this is gonna be probably the hardest wave. I mean wave five is obviously not an easy wave at all, but Yeah, I played PoE. We'll be playing the next league start. Is hell yes. Now Valkyrie's not gonna have much chance there, but that's all right, as we can take this wave pretty well. Again, just a huge added bonus of freezing arrow is the freezing part. On top of it having decent damage. I went back to the edge bow because I got gold wrap, which got me another an extra shot, but we could also totally run that other bow as well. Either bow would honestly work here. this guy out first uh, I might just try the trickster see that new trickster and test it out Kind TVD. So yeah, we're still just using that base bow. Like nothing. Nothing crazy here. edge bow that we've had for ever and that shell bow if we had one more shell we would 100% be using that two more shells even more so So Lister is going to be extra fast and cold fire immune. Not my favorite. If you want to stick around and fight him, you totally can. I mean, you can see we do enough damage to these guys, especially if you cast lower resist. We can very easily kill, take out these minions. No worries whatsoever. I don't really feel like dealing with the cold fire enchant for all of the minions and then Lister and all that that's just gonna take a while so we're gonna do the same strategy that we've done before which is you can just come back in here and just uh, as long as he's outside of those you know the minions are outside then you're fine Then we just get to bail. We can just lower res and blast him. Mm 
Nice and simple. Man, we don't really want to get frozen. Let me try to avoid that. At the same time, mm -hmm. if we don't want to deal with his clone, again, we can just come over here. Thank you, bad hands. Spend eight seconds away from Bale and his clone. And then just go back in. And the clone will have disappeared, as well as all of those tentacles. Anything spawned. So, just a nice way to face bail up yourself instead of having to uh, fight the clone. And again, if he does it more, then you can, you can do it as many times as you need. I think it's about right, Sweetums. We should be able to even just go stand like over here for eight seconds. Twenty something, twenty-five, thirty, somewhere in there. And clone is gone. Simple as that. Thanks, Stone. Now you can also see, of course, that uh, this character is not built for for fighting all the bosses, especially like Bale, super tanky bosses. It takes a little bit of time. So, just something to note. another clone we can go back we need more mana potions anyways no worries I mean crushing blow does work on ranged weapons but again this build isn't about doesn't have good attack rating the us hitting would not do very much oh my gosh the clones And it's only half. So. Hopefully you're not getting as cloned as I am right now. Summon Druid can make it through hell. It's going to be slow, but... Spend some time away until the clone disappears. Come back. Boy, getting frozen. Bale sure loves his clones right now. <laughs> yeah, Druid's Ravens now are, are really nice, actually. A lot of damage from those Ravens. Oh my god. Seventh clone. No, he's just being annoying. What a 
that, Breaker? Discord DMs real quick. Uh, what am I? All right, hold on. Gotcha. Thank you. What? Oh, son of a gun. Yeah, the tentacles aren't fun either because they're cold immune, so. I mean, damage is cold immune. Alright. Almost done, and if Bale will cooperate and relax. For even the tiniest bit of time. Will be great. Again, this isn't your high DPS build for uh, boss kills. Not one bit. Crap and magic. Where am I getting the crap from? One more time away. Let's see it. Alright. Oh my god. I have a Java's unguided playthrough. This is the Boa's unguided playthrough. Is it dead yet? Almost. I mean, bosons are viable. Again, this one is working its way through the game, and it's been honestly pretty fine. It's not good at bosses, so this is going to be the, you know, worst part for it. And then it's also, um, you know, as you get really good gear, it really starts to get better. But until then, give yourselves the clap, everybody. There's Slow's target knocked back. You have just beat Hell with the bow is on. Easy as that. So. Let's take a final look at our character. We ended at level 70. Not bad. Again, you could definitely be much higher. You could definitely be mid 70s to later 70s if you'd been farming more and, you know, doing all that stuff. And that would help your character out for sure. Thank you, Slain. 
Uh, our strength and dexterity is essentially 60 and 60. This was so I could use some weapons and armors and stuff. Everything else in vitality. And then a little bit in energy, just to get a little bit more mana and a uh, better chance for um, potions to double. Um, we've maxed out Freezing Arrow and we've maxed out Cold Arrow for the synergy. I don't do any Ice Arrow, really. It gives 5% freeze length per level, so... If you want to do that, you can to try and increase the freeze length. It is nice, but we much would rather have these points in Exploding Arrow and Fire Arrow to really get that second damage going for us. Um, passive and Magic, we just kind of 1-1-1 one, one, one all around. Getting this Valkyrie is very helpful, at least having something to just sit there for us to uh, fight and, and hit. Um, and to just tank for even a tiny bit of time, but also for our piece. And then of course, nothing here. For our gear, we have Edge Bow, uh, which is just the, the plus one bow and crossbow at 35 IAS. Again, it's just about shooting off as much as you can. I also have this bow that I used for a while, plus three with two shales. If I could get a couple more shales, this bow I 100% would be using. Even one more shale, I would be using this bow right now. Um, Right now, I think I'm two frames, though, off because I got the gold wrap, and so this sped up a little bit. We have the rock star we found. This was very helpful for resistances. Obviously, I made this prismatic amulet for resistances. Still using the piece for plus two to Amazon skills. Still using this that we shopped, you know, back in Nightmare Early. 54 to mana from this, so that's just helpful for the mana. The gold wrap that we found at the end. Until then, we just used a big life belt. Um, but I like this for the IS and MF. And then this super nice uh, quad res ring right here to just get some good resistances. And then these gloves or boots as well for some fast front walk and nice resistances. Um, so just some basic stuff that we kind of found along. The, the charms are all pretty minimal. Nothing crazy. We've got our lower resist. We've got our tele staff, the basics. And then here's just kind of some other stuff that we, you know, used along the way. But, you know, a lot of this stuff is just, uh, you know, what it is what it is. We got our co-rune, so if we did find a nice bow, we would have made a melody with that, and that would have been really solid. And again, a lot of it is how much farming you want to do. I think that's just the big piece, right? Um... Fizz Boson versus Cold Fire. This is going to be the strongest Boson to play through the game solo. A physical Boson is amazing, but you really need some better gear. So, for instance, if I go to Broken, this character is fantastic, right? I love this chick. Um, she's super fun. She runs around and she just, like, murders everything. Uh, and it's, it's just great. Um, however, it takes a lot of gear for her to really, like, get good, right? She's got Faith, she's got Fortitude, she's got her High Lords and her Raven and her nice stuff. She's got all these plus, you know, life, AR, max damage, charms and things. She's got a, a 45, 117, 30 Fester Unlock Jeweler's Tiara. Like, you, you need a lot of gear. And then, you know, you run around, and wherever you want to run around, and you just murder everything. It just becomes, uh, you know, a slaughter fest. But again, it takes, it takes a while. So, that's kind of the, you know, the, the tough part. Whereas, for this bow is on, this chick has nothing, right? I've shown the gear, and it's very limited. And she's still able to go through and play through and have a good time and all of that. So you just need a lot of stuff to get a physical bow on really going. Can a physical bow on get through the game? Maybe with insight now? And... I mean, getting some some gear that you find along the way, getting some good IAS from some like gloves, and you get a potentially, potentially. Maybe we'll do a guided playthrough on that at some point. But for now, we will uh, say goodbye to YouTube. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. Congratulations if you made it to the end, and you have beaten hell as well. 
Peace, YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe.